So my first question for you is how did you define beautiful when you were younger? I'm here today because you're interviewing me basically about my last TEDx talk from UC Irvine, Weird is Beautiful. And when I got to that point in my life where I realized that it's our differences and our uniqueness that make us beautiful. But your question was, how did I define it when I was younger? And I define beauty as everything that I wasn't. So it was everything that was around me. And I grew up in a town that was, you know, mostly blonde hair, blue eyes. And that was how I define beauty. And I would look around to see, you know, what was popular on TV at the time. And the standard of beauty was Heather Locklear from Melrose Place. So that was, you know, kind of what was around me and how I defined it. Mm -hmm. How did you define weird when you were younger? So to me, the definition of weird was my mom. <laughs> so in my talk, I said that, you know, we all have parents that have embarrassed us at one point or another, but multiply that by a thousand. And that's how I felt growing up. So a lot of children of immigrants have dealt with similar issues because, you know, there weren't a lot of Iranian immigrants in our town. There really weren't any. And my mom spoke with a very thick accent. English wasn't her first language. So, you know, I was embarrassed of that. And I would say, mom, please don't talk to me in front of my friends, like be low key. And she didn't have a low key bone in her body. She would come and pick me up from school. And I'd be standing there with all my friends pretending like I didn't see her. And she was the type to just lay her hand on the horn and stick her head out the window and say, oh, the <laughs> like in Farsi and just, you know, but like I said, those were typical things, but what made her atypical and what made it even worse for me was that she was one of the very few people I've ever met in my life who really didn't care about the opinions of others. So she was a real free thinker. And because of that, she was always inventing weird things and thinking outside the box and doing things differently. And I was so misguided at the time that like I said, I would look at TV and see what was popular. And I would say like, gosh, why can't Heather Locklear be my mom? Or, you know, later the Kardashians became popular. And I was like, oh, I wish Kris Jenner was my mom or even Caitlyn Jenner. That's how misguided I was. I spent my life wishing she was someone else because I didn't appreciate how unique she really was. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. <laughs> What is the craziest invention your mom has made or a thing she has done? So, like I said, my mom loved making inventions and I'm going to send you these pictures. So you'll have some of them. Uh, one thing she did was our shoe rack right outside of our front door was like this big bush, like a, a, a shrub with branches sticking out. And she would literally put a shoe on each branch just right outside of our house for all the neighbors to see. Another thing she did was at her work, she kind of had a desk against the wall a little bit like this. And she literally nailed a pillow to the wall permanently, just nailed it there. So when she was tired, she would just lean back, put her feet up and just sleep at work like that. Uh, the other thing you might've saw was she had her shoes. She would pull a pair of thick wool socks over her shoes. So imagine, a shoe with a sock over it. She'd wear those in the house and dance and skate around the floor. That's how she cleaned it. But the weirdest invention of them all was her jacket that she would take with her traveling. When she'd fly on airplanes, she would wear this long coat and imagine inside stockings, like socks that were sewn, like three feet long, just sewn inside. And she'd shove them all full of her belongings so she didn't have to be bothered with checking bags or paying extra fees. And she would keep adding to this coat. And now she actually has sewn extra blankets into the back of it because airplanes are cold. So she doesn't take any suitcases. She just wears this coat. Wow. <laughs> um, explain the community that you lived in as a child. So we grew up in a town called Santa Cruz in California. And at the time, it was very progressive and liberal, a lot of hippies, a lot of marijuana advocates, a lot of counterculture. And their motto at this, you know, in Santa Cruz was keep Santa Cruz weird. 
So they loved being weird. So imagine that in a town where they embrace being weird and their motto is about being weird, my mom actually pushed the envelope. So even to those people, she was alarmingly weird because of all her inventions. <laughs> um, how did you deal with having a different mom as a kid who just wanted to fit in? Yeah, I, for me, it gave me a lot of anxiety. I definitely just wanted to fit in. I didn't realize how amazing and special it is to have original ideas or to be different or have a different perspective. So I dealt with it a lot by laughing at my mom. I would make fun of her and, you know, it was because I was really insecure. I was insecure with myself. So I passed that negativity back to her by making fun of her. And that's something that, that you young people should look at too, is if somebody's doing that to you, why? What is it inside of themselves that they hate that's making them treat other people that way? And if you're one of those people that do that to others, you know, try to peer pressure people to fit in, maybe ask yourself the same question. Why do you think we embrace the weird in the rich and famous rather than in all the rest of us? Well, the reason we accept weirdness in rich and famous people is because by the time they're rich and famous, they've proven to be winners <laughs> and we want to side with the winners. But before they succeeded, they were weird too. Think of Steve Jobs and Apple when they first came out and said, we want to put a camera inside of your phone. And people were like, why? Why the heck would I need a camera in my phone? And now we think they're genius and brilliant because they succeeded. And same with all the other companies that have disrupted entire industries. And I mean, when Uber first came out, people were like, that's a weird idea. You want regular people to turn their own car into taxis and drive around strangers. I mean, can't you get murdered like that? That was the, the sentiment that it was really a weird idea. But now that it's a multi-billion dollar company and it's you know, disrupted the whole taxi industry. Now they're considered, you know, brilliant. Their idea was great, but some people aren't so lucky. Um, there was a scientist, a Hungarian scientist, actually, his name was Ignaz Semmelweis, and he was the pioneer hundreds of years ago of hand washing. He told all the surgeons in Europe that so many people are dying from infections during childbirth and during surgery it's because you have germs on your hands. And he told the surgeons to wash their hands and they basically sent him to an insane asylum because they were like, who are you to tell me to wash my hands? Are you saying I'm dirty? And they thought he was weird and they rejected and persecuted him. And it wasn't until after he died that he became recognized for his original idea. And that's why we need weird people. We need people willing to think outside the box not only are all these companies and technologies making our lives better and easier and more convenient, but it's actually saving lives. Somebody like the example I gave you saved a lot of lives. How would you define weird and beautiful now? Well, now I define beauty as someone who has the courage to be themselves. Someone who doesn't fear being disliked. And weird people are beautiful, like my mom. And I'll tell you why. It's because they made the choice to be who they want to be, not who other people told them to be. And they didn't bow down and comply to the pressures to fit in and be another cog in the machine of society. That they have, they have the confidence to be comfortable in their own skin and to be who they wanna be. And what's even more beautiful than that are those who are willing to encourage them to be a cheerleader. People who are willing to lift other people up and to put their insecurities at rest and to be a light to other people in this world that can sometimes be dark, that that is beauty. That's really wonderful. Is there anything else you'd like to let the audience know? Well, in your lives, you're going to be criticized and rejected. It's just going to happen. It's part of life. It happens to everybody. But don't ever let anyone tell you you can't be who you want to be, especially not yourself. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you so much for Thank everything. you. <laughs> yes, and feel free to reach out to me and let's keep this conversation going. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye.